when you truly begin to understand the water network within your body, you can start to heal. Today's episode is going to dive into that as well as some different forms of water that you might want to consider drinking. So stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Sarah. This is the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. This is part two with Feta Austin. We have a beautiful slideshow presentation in this episode. So if you are here on YouTube, you can look at a lot of those slides and I hope you enjoy those. And we're going to talk also about some different types of water that might be a little bit more ideal to drink. So episode one, if you haven't watched that, make sure you go back and watch that. We are going to, we talk really extensively about kind of water consciousness. In this episode, we talk more about that healing the body, but we also talk about some different types of water that are a little bit more ideal to drink and why. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure to leave us a like, a comment, share this with a friend or family member who you feel would enjoy it. And before we dive into the episode, just want to thank two sponsors of today's episode. Viva Rays, as you see in this episode, I am wearing the blue blocking glasses because it's being filmed in the evening. Uh, Veda is in New Zealand. I'm here in the States. So we have quite different time zones. So if you are someone that needs to be on a device or computer a lot or after hours, check out Viva Rays. Use my code Yogi to save 15% on those. They are extremely high quality blue blocking glasses. Absolutely love them and recommend them to all my friends and family. Second sponsor of today's episode is going to be Optimal Carnivore. Absolutely love this new bone and joint restore product. Again, it is really wonderful if you have issues with cartilage, if you just need that boost to build stronger, healthier bones, and maybe you even have an issue digesting something like dairy. This can be a great, great addition to your diet. And as I mentioned in last week's episode, this does not contain extra liver, which is a qualm I have with a lot of organ meat complexes. So they add extra liver and you can have too much of a good thing. So just the basics here, what you need for strong bones, healthy cartilage, all of these things. And you can use the link that's in the description to go to a special landing page that Optimal Carnivore has set up just for my followers. Again, check that out down in the show notes. And thank you again for watching. Let's go ahead and jump right on into this episode with Veda Austin. Enjoy. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I I have my own little kind of water lab <laughs> in the kitchen and I will, my husband thinks I'm a little crazy, but he's seen me do a lot of things over the last year that he's just kind of like, wait a second, are you the same person that I married? You know, he's just seen me do a lot. And I think a lot of it has come down to these intentions, you know, that putting in the water and We've invested in a system that's like got structured, mineralized, filtered water with hydrogen, like right out of the tap. So I, I have the the expensive water system, but even with that, I still take a moment and just put intention into my water. And if he's being negative, I'm always like, just please stay away from my water if you're going to talk like that. <laughs> you know, it just uh, reminds me of something. Um, Sometimes the simplest solutions are right there and the children know what they are. Mm -hmm. So I used to get so much of this water, right, to, to give to everybody that from my um, uh, healing space. So, so I would get all this water be in the back of the car. And my son, like uh, I'd often do this thing where my son and my daughter, they get to choose the music we listen to in the car and we'd gone to pick it up. And my son wanted to listen to something which probably wasn't so you know, harmonious to the water. And I'm like, I said to my daughter, Shanti, I shan't, Shanti, can you do something about this? Because I always look to her and go, well, she'll have some remarkable answer. And but this was back in the time when my daughter, she loved My Little Pony. I don't know if you uh -huh. know about that. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and there's this, this, the theme song of My Little Pony, you know, and I, I won't even, I won't scare you by trying to sing it. But anyway, if you can Google the, the, the theme song of My Little Pony, it's very sweet, you know, especially yeah. sung by my daughter. And so my daughter would just kind of, she, she would just basically sing My Little Pony and she would just have this little, she'd just put it over the water like a little water spell. And she was like, it's constantly playing over here now. So the water's listening to My Little Pony, it's fine. And, you know, it's interesting <laughs> Because whenever I would freeze that water, I'd always see little ponies 
in the water oh and um, it totally works and so wow. we often get too stuck in our head it's such a our, um, our intention is a blanket yeah you know it's a blanket that 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 really supports our intention and it's held within the water and it's yeah. water is surprisingly attracted to what we're feeling rather than what we're thinking it's true uh, I, I see that a lot um and anyway so uh so sorry you were you were just talking about um what you've got going on with the restructuring Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about what you think is, is ideal for, for drinking and just kind of your thoughts on, on that. Um, my, my personal preference is to collect spring water. I'm fortunate mm. enough to be over to just go and get it myself. Yes. And there's just, you know, such a big difference between being able to actually go to the source and collect it. It's like a pilgrimage and there's yes. a connection compared to when you go to the store and you buy water off the shelf and mm -hmm. we often don't associate it and, and or even think about maybe where it came from we might no. not even know the terrain that it looked like once it's kind of like our disassociation between of meat and yes. animal you know yes um and so i always recommend fresh spring water is my favorite now I realize lots of people are not able to do that but there is I think a website called find a spring which yes. you can look for and I, I really highly recommend it yeah. now a lot of people want to talk, to get out like a whole health system and I have a little thing because I thought we may touch on this this was just from one of my master classes so I just got it up just in case we went on this these are uh, some containers kinds of containers that I like mm. so water if you're collecting water um, then then you must know that spring water particularly is very sensitive to artificial light which is one of the reasons that I like to have water in a dark glass bottle I, my preference is this kind of indigo blue kind of blue bottle um, water that is through just clear glass um, you know is very often exposed to the light and it's hard enough for the water to be sort of trapped in a bottle and not moving let alone being then exposed to unnatural light so um, colored glass, this isn't because Mountain Valley, I'm not trying to promote any waters. I'm just, I <laughs> found this because it's like a green glass um, and it's hard to find in the States, you know, colored glass bottles at the store. Um, the, I love the Amphora water eggs. So this was kind of based around um, Schauberger's uh, concepts and ideas around how water likes to move and flow um, and this is a ceramic egg um, so these are some ideas so with the blue bottles you can make blue solar water so mm -hmm. you use the best water that you can and you put the water into the blue bottle and you put it in the sun for one to two hours and that is said to help relieve the body of unwanted traumatic memories. And I've seen some rather remarkable things happen to people that have been um, very traumatized or gone through some accident or something like this. And it seems very simple, but the, the colors make a difference as to how the water responds structurally as well. And I've done many, many tests to, to see that and to say that. I would suggest never put water in a red bottle. Mm. Uh, it's Why's interesting that? because I've discovered that it actually, red is really for water, a color that matches acidity and that um, when you put water into a, um, so the test that I've done, and I'm, I'm going to be sharing it really soon, is where I've got my um, uh, spring water, and I know the pH, the p potential power of hydrogen of the spring water. And I've then put some of that spring water into a blue bottle and some of that spring water, <clears throat> excuse me, into a red bottle and left them overnight. And interestingly, what I found is that the water in the red bottle 
the pH has actually decreased by two, which is quite significant. Wow. Whereas in the blue bottle, the pH has stayed the same. And so um, that's very, you know, very interesting. Copper has been used for, for, for centuries in India. Um, but I would say if drink it quickly, don't leave it in the copper bottle for long periods of time, but, but it, it can keep water very cool and water likes to be cool. It doesn't like to be hot. Mm. Um, I would say move away from plastic if you can, if you can't, and there are people that cannot, if they're buying the water and they don't, can't afford a whole house system or any of these things, keep water at least out of the light, put it into a cool, dark, really? Yes, because again, water is super sensitive to light and artificial light. One of the things that I observed is that when I had that healing experience with water, that was from a spring. Mm -hmm. So very alive water, not that water's die dead. I mean, I'm just saying because it was very vibrant and in it's in, in a state of movement for so and, and just water also from an aquifer has gone through so much filtering of the earth so when it comes up it's very very potent so what I did was put it into a clear container and I left some out in the sun to see what would happen and what we discovered is that within 10 days an algae began to grow in the water of which it should if it is really spring water because it has everything it needs to grow life and so um what we found when we we had it analyzed and tested we found that the algae was actually a rare type of spirulina that was growing so that was very interesting however if we kept it in the dark it it, it didn't grow that algae so so that was something I learned about that now there is a variety of things if you want um yeah, to that's what I've got the spring aqua in our kitchen which I love yeah and and if you ever watch Isabel Friend, um, yeah, she's a good friend of mine, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, she really, really recommends the Spring Aqua. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's she's done her research, and mm -hmm. she really loves. That's the why I Aqua. bought it was because of her. <laughs> yeah, I just, many people have bought it because of her mm -hmm. um, and her comparison to to other options. So, um, and here are a few things that I've seen some structural changes. Um, I Tell use... me what you've seen with Quinton, because I am obsessed with uh, with the Quinton minerals. They were just the thing I had to have pre-pregnancy, during pregnancy, and now breastfeeding. Even though I have the spring aqua, I still just kind of crave the, the Quinton. Like I have to keep having it. So I'd love to hear what you have discovered well, about that. Oh, I've, I've had my own healing experience, fairly significant one using keton. Really? Um, so, yes. Yeah, so essentially keton water is from seawater mm -hmm. and it's um, collected and harvested from particular areas. So there are, I think I might be wrong, but something like seven giant whirlpools naturally in the oceans and they're huge, miles long. And what they do is they kind of um, bring all of the special minerals up from the bottom to the top. <clears throat> and the plankton are very attracted and they love to eat these little minerals and these little be the, these little creature, creatures which have these specific rare minerals in them. So then there's this kind of plankton, flurry of plankton, and they're all eating on these little microorganisms. And then the plankton pee. And so the, the ketone water is the seawater, which has this incredibly rare um, type of mineral in it from all of the, the plankton pee, which, which sounds gross, but obviously it's just a, a very small part and it's almost like in trace elements in the um, ocean water and then it's cold it's processed in a cold way so that it's not taking any of the goodness away and then you can get it so that it's half and half so it's not really really salty or you can get a really really salty one so you can isotonic or I can't remember the name of the, the other hypertonic one. I love the hypertonic yeah and so um, people might think okay well yeah so we're just drinking seawater well it's a little bit more it's a little bit yeah. more special than that. <laughs> um, 
And so years ago, um, I had done a lot of traveling and there are some things that you can pick up when you're traveling. Um, you don't expect that can incubate in your body mm -hmm. for a while. And I had got something called, I don't know if I'm ever saying it right, but um, I say like leishmaniasis, which is um, like kind of like a really, really serious um, malaria. Mm. And it's usually picked up by people um, in the Middle East that go over for like a lot of soldiers. Um, it's usually found in the Middle East and it's sometimes found in South America but I had picked it up when I was in Tahiti and wow. it had incubated in my body for three months. And there's three types and two of them, you die. Wow. And so it, it, what it does is create these huge lesions all over your body. So you literally look like a leper and it was, and there is no known cure. And wow. I was so distraught because I had no idea what was happening to me. And um, it was interesting because one thing had led to another whereby I um, was trying to find a cure and trying to like once I'd gone and been told okay you have this thing and they were like well we could give you this you know kind of experimental shot and we'll see if that helps but it's got all these side effects I'm like no 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 I mean I know my body can heal but let me try and figure out what I need somehow intuitively um, I stumbled across Keton and what was so crazy was that I'm um, just like do it so I'm looking at you so what was so crazy was that I, I was like okay I'm going to order some and the website I'd gone on I couldn't find how to order and it was super confusing and I was like oh it seems good but it seems like too hard yeah so then someone who was a client said, oh, you know, I want to introduce you to this person who's super into water and um, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay. So this guy came over and um, we start talking and turns out he's American and he lives around the corner from me and he's bringing Keton and him and his brother kind of discovered. Is it Robert Slovak? Yes. <laughs> and so he lived like literally around the corner and gave wow. me some of the um, Keton to try. And because I told him my story, he, he was giving it to me really. And, um, and so I started to use it uh, and a lot of it every yeah. single day because I wasn't leaving the house. Like I, mm. I, it's a, I only have one sort of scar on my back from it. And it, it was, I uh, looked awful. And within a week, most of the lesions had started to like really go away Within a month, I looked normal again. I started to get my energy back. Uh, within a year, um, I was tested and they couldn't find any trace of it. Wow. And I took ketone for nine months, but I just kind of got more light and light with it, um, uh, the better I got. So I've had my own personal experience. It's good that you're doing it while you're pregnant because they've yeah. done studies using ketone to say that people that have been prone to miscarriage when taking the ketone, don't have miscarriages, have healthy babies. Um, yeah, that's why I started it because I had had two miscarriages and then I had done IVF and it didn't work. And I was just so determined I wanted to have this baby. And so I started on the pregnancy protocol like six months before I even got pregnant. So I was taking it for months and months and then all through my pregnancy and now during breastfeeding, but um, something Robert said is that the babies that, that you can tell the babies when they've, the mothers have taken the Quinton because their faces are just, their head is just so symmetrical and they just have the, the most beautiful skull. And that's one of the things that all the doctors always remark on about my son is that he, his head is just like perfectly shaped and it's, you know, a, you know, it's in the higher percentile. So it's not a small head, but he just has this like gorgeous, you know, beautiful face. And I'm like, I think it's the key to that, that was helped play a part in that, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very interesting how much research they've done and, and how it originated, you know, how Keton mm -hmm. was kind of from Rene Keton, yes. who really helped so many people um, with, uh, various different um, 
plague when they, when they had the plague back in the day and yes. he was doing these infusions and made a massive difference so um I can touch on some of the other things that I had here so soleil is a really interesting one and super simple mm -hmm. it's just where you basically get natural emphasis on natural large chunks of salt natural salt um you fill it about quarter of the way then you fill the rest up with the best water you can you leave it overnight so that eventually it's just a residue at the bottom or maybe a couple of nights and that means that the water has absorbed as much salt as it possibly can i used to wonder you know how can water especially if you've collected it straight from a spring how does it stay structured how is how is that even a thing since mm -hmm. it's so sensitive and one of the things that I came to see for myself was that when I would collect my spring water, if I put a teaspoon of soleil into one liter of water, um, I sent I sent um, two uh, bottles, blue bottles, um, to my friend Laurent Costa in France. One had soleil in it and one didn't, both from the spring that helped heal me. And he takes microscopic photos of water. And so um, I said, can you please take photos? And I want to see if there's any difference. And it's interesting because it, it got to France, but it didn't get to him. It went to the wrong address. Then it came back to New Zealand. And then it ended, I sent it all the way back to the right address. And so I had all this EMF and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know if it's going to look any good. So the one that had no soleil in it, he didn't really find too much. But the one that did... He sent me the photo and it was extraordinary because we see this beautiful geometry, but within the geometry were these little round blue dots, mm. which he said that you sometimes see in seawater, which is like this electrical component. So I knew that, in fact, even with all of that travel, the, the water still was structurally sound and beautiful, both on a macroscopic level and a microscopic level. So I saw a really big difference um, with using soleil using spring water. But then this one's a really unusual one. Someone sent it to me. They call it the photon disc, mm. whereby I originally thought, oh, it, you just put the your glass of water on top of it and there's all these geometries and maybe they do something but actually it's designed so you put this pan under it and you put it in the sun and the light filters through the sunshine filters through these lights in a geometric pattern and it created one of the most extraordinary um crystallographic images i've seen it's very interesting the um Turi tap is, is made of ceramic and it goes through in kind of um this spiral uh, shape the same similar thing to the natural action tech as well mm -hmm. um, and then people talk a lot about the analemma wand and I, I have, love uh, mine mm -hmm. I I have kind of a, a lot of thoughts around it I'd love uh, to hear. yeah uh, I was gonna say I don't know if you want me to share them or not yeah I'd um, love to hear yeah okay and then after that I'll talk about silk because that's not so well known no, I've never even heard of that, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, the Analemma one, lots of people wanted me to do studies on it. I was approached by lots of people. You know, so in the end, Tom Cohen sent me one. Yes. And, um, and so, you know, you look at all the science behind it and it's like, oh, this this looks great. And I met the lovely guy, one of them. Dolph the or Mario. Not Dolph or Mario, actually. Huh. Um, his name was... Anyway, it'll come to me. I just can't remember right off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm good with faces, not with names. And um, and so... <laughs> but I don't think... it's not, I know Dolph. Everyone knows about Dolph. But this, this guy was like kind of integral player. Anyway, I met him at the water conference. And so I shared with him my concerns. So I... I'm very interested in water that can move. It's kind of one of the reasons mm -hmm. I'm very glad that the crystallography is a short process because even freezing water is kind of, it can't move in the freezing stage. So once it melts, it can go free again. And so there's a big part of me that's very, very interested in water moving and being able to move. And so I know there's the mother water and it has all of the properties and that's encased in this 
quartz wand and the, the the there is that combination of the quartz and the mother water and so i i asked would it be possible for the the, the lid to come off so you could tip some of the water out and exchange it so the water can come and go and come and go you know um he seemed very open and I was grateful for that so I, I I don't know that that will ever happen though um so there was one photo that I shared where there was a, a difference from the tap water to a different improved structure and one of my intuitive things to do with the wand was to put it in my mouth because I felt that the mother water needed connection because so often we all do don't we you know yeah. and so you know such a big part of the way we see water is about what water can do for us and how it can improve us rather than what can we do for it and I think when we start to think about what we can do for water and what we can do for nature there is a whole different energy that happens and so I have seen that different crystals have their own signature patterns and that they can improve tap water sorry my cat's going crazy and um <laughs> and so uh the signature pattern of quartz was what I saw make the change I so I saw that there was the signature pattern of quartz in the um in the in the in the example that I gave where I saw a difference um what I mentioned was that I know that water can be kind of um, trapped, if you will, in minerals. So you mm -hmm. can buy quartz and you can buy crystals and they have like that pocket of water. But one of the ways you know and identify it is that that pocket of water throws rainbows. Mm. And so, um, and, and, and there's been a natural process as to how that has happened. So the, the wand doesn't throw rainbows. And I've, and so there's, there is that and I know when you know something it's like so psychological when you when you read all about it and everything like that and it makes sense then there's of course a natural liking and loving towards it and I don't want to say I just want to be honest about me and I, it's not yeah. for you know honestly and I've and I have one and I <sighs> And I, and I feel a responsibility towards it because it's like, well, it's just sitting there and yes, you can in, in, in put it in the light and yes, we could use it, but, but there is something that feels like I just want to crack it open and let the water go. If I'm honest, <laughs> I feel like, oh, I don't know if it wants to be in there because mm. I'm very much a person that doesn't like the idea much of being sort of stuck in something. And, and someone said, well, that's its purpose. And I'm like, well, how do you know? yeah just because that's the circumstances that happen that mean that that's in its purpose well I don't know I mean they think we just don't know yeah. and so we see these positive things and the science is there to support it and all of that stuff and I have seen an improvement but I think that's based on the fact that it's encased in quartz more than the water inside of it again I, you know I could be totally wrong but this is just from my work and my 10 years of experience working with water that I think if there was a simple change to be able to take the cap off, release the water and then fill it again, there would be a different energetic with that. And I would suggest to them, of which I probably did, I said a lot of things, um, gratefully to someone who seemed really quite um, open to hearing, but I would suggest that 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 quartz, rather than being clear, actually be blue. Um, if there was a way of having it as a blue quartz, so that then gives multiple, it gives it multiple benefits with a screw top. So, um, so I, you know, I, there's and, and and it's not what everyone wants to hear. And, and I think it's really fascinating. I've never really looked at it that way. And I think my listeners also are open-minded enough to hear differing points of view, especially from someone who has done the type of work that you do. I mean, this is, yeah, no one 
that I know has ever studied water in the way that you do. So it's, it's very fascinating thing to, to look at it that way. It really is. Yeah. I did see a, a difference when I connected the water in my mouth. You know, it's like, it's kind of like a thermometer. And then I was like, oh, so I held the water, the wand in my mouth for a bit. And then I stirred the water and then I saw some difference. But but I think that was in relation to the water wanting to feel connected mm. and and finding some kind of place where from where it once came. So you kind of imagine that that water is used to dark spaces. It's been under the earth. It's been moving freely mm. through the space, right? And then, and then it's like, and then it's suddenly in cups. And then it's suddenly, you know, just like water is, you know, water becomes the cup, just like Bruce Lee says, it becomes, you know, the teapot. I sometimes wonder if water became the human. So, um, so there's that. But then I'll, I'll talk on silk, which, you know, and again, I'm, um, I mean, I there's so many wonderful people that are supporting Al the Analemma one. I'm not trying mm -hmm. to say anything bad. This is really just my opinions, and yeah. people can make up their own mind. But um, but with the silk, uh, I made a really. I spent a lot of time in India. India is kind of a very special place for me. I've been nine times, and wow. uh, I go out to the villages. I, I'm never a tourist when I go to India, um, and. Uh, one time I was in the village and I noticed that there were these um, three Indian ladies. Two were holding a silk sari out, so one on each end. Um, and there was a bucket underneath the sari and one lady was pumping water so that the water was filtering through the silk sari. And I asked the person who I was with to interpret and they asked what they were doing. Turns out that the silk was filtering the water uh, not just on a physical kind of level, but apparently water filtering through silk is also very good to help kind of remove unwanted um, energies. And I thought that was fascinating because I remember having read some of Rudolf Steiner's work where he encourages people to filter water through silk. And then I thought, well, that's very interesting. And then I told Dr. Jerry Pollack about it. And he was saying that water beside silk starts to build exclusion zone and I thought well that's very interesting and then you think about the silkworm and then you think well that's very that's that's cool because like the silkworm although it's a little bit tragic and is that it's building its home you know this transformative place out of the silk and so there's this energy of transformation that comes with it if you don't if you're vegan and you don't like the idea of of silk at all it I'm it's interesting because I'm working right now on my next masterclass. The topic is what different religions, faiths, cultures, and ancient texts can teach us about water. And one of the things in the Bible is that it talks about wearing linen and wearing wool and how not to wear them to together. Because And that's quite interesting because I started to learn more about that. And so um, when you filter water through linen, and if you filter water through wool, although if with wool, you might get some bits here and there, but I was curious to see how it would structurally change water or what it would, if it had a signature pattern, um, you see significant improvements. Silk, water, silk, linen, and wool are all charged by the sun and, and they're natural fibers. But if you put wool and silk together, wool and linen together, you see this interesting sort of chained they, they're very structurally different and they kind of um behave differently apparently cotton 100 percent cotton has the same hertz frequency as a human being whereas synthetics and um um polyester, polyester yeah frequency of someone who is dead wow is very very interesting and then you go well what kind of sheets are you aware and i have on what your about bed? bamboo Oh, yeah. Well, bamboo's probably, well, it depends how it's made, I suppose. But mm. natural fibers are, you know, going to make it. And bamboo's interesting because there's bamboo salt. Yeah. You know, we shove the salt into the bamboo and then fire it. And 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 there's definitely good properties with bamboo. So um, this is very interesting. You know, I also, mm. I was driving in the car the other, yesterday, and I was listening to a podcast and to some doctor and 
he was saying that so many people don't understand the significance of the appendix and he said you know you just actually, take them out <laughs> Yeah, but he said the appendix really is the brain of the body. He said it sits between the intestines and the colon. It understands everything you've eaten, everything you've drunk, everything you've um, you've been processing, both physically and emotionally, and it sends information throughout the whole body. Um, we obviously have other senses, or else the people that didn't have their appendix wouldn't be able to function very well at all. But um, it was interesting to hear. I, I I just heard about that yesterday. So I found that quite fascinating. Um, so your materials are an interesting one. And the way in which what we what we have to our skin, you know, mm. we are a body of water. So I would recommend to people if they're handy, that if you, you know, if your bottle of water happens to be a clear one, like gla clear glass bottle, for example, and you 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 like that, then I would also suggest that maybe you can find uh, some silk um, or linen, perhaps, and but make a silk bag to put your bottle in to hold your bottle because not only that will that keep the the light away from your water, but it could potentially help to build that exclusion zone as well. Interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. My, uh, my son, he has been wonderful, but one thing I had to do, which my mother was really upset. She bought me all these baby clothes and they're all polyester. <laughs> and I noticed that his skin was getting really irritated whenever I'd wear these clothes and put the clothes on him. And so I, a couple of months ago had to just buy all new clothes for him, either hundred percent cotton or 100% bamboo. And now his skin doesn't get irritated by the clothing. But I've read, I've read, I didn't, I was like, is this a thing? And so that kind of, you know, there's the, these layers to your wellness journey. It's like, oh, we're going to do the best food and sustainable farming, know where your food comes from. Like that's maybe step one for a lot of people. And then understanding water and <laughs> continuing to go deeper and deeper there. And now it's like, oh, now I need to look at, you know, the clothing that we wear. And like you said, how it, it encases the water and, and surrounds it. So that makes, that's just so interesting. It, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, my, my, my husband, he's got this silk t-shirt that he just, he loves, right. He loves yeah. it. And energetically, it's very, it's very interesting because I, I, you know, I see him all the time and he wears all different kinds of clothes, but yeah. when he wears that silk t-shirt, he becomes 100% more attractive to everybody else. Wow. And it's really interesting how, how people start to gravitate and go, Oh, I just want to touch, <laughs> touch that silk shirt. Wow. And I'm like, That's interesting. Like how, what, how what we naturally gravitate to is, is like energetically as well. Yeah. So it's like it throws your energy further. It, your energy can be kind of bounce out more using yeah. net fibers. And I, I think we see this, you know, with when you filter water through these substances, mm -hmm. when you filter water through polyester, mm -hmm. it starts to look like um, tap water. Hmm. So through polyester, it doesn't work at all well. Wow. Again, things I'm beginning to 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 start to share. There's so much I've done, and sometimes it's hard to kind of keep up with, with it all. <laughs> um, but one of the most significant things I know we've talked for quite some time now already, but would be with the egg albumin. Like mm. I said, I've, I've studied rather a lot of different fluids, and I always thought, well, if any any fluid would be naturally informed, it would be amniotic fluid, surely. Oh yes. I've always thought that ancestral information is shared through the amniotic fluid to the child or the embryo. Hmm. And, and, and I don't think it's just there to kind of um, uh, cushion the child and, and create and, and, and kind of give it this sustenance. I, I think there's more to it. And that was a theory. And now I think more and more that it's actually very true because of what I've seen. So I thought, well, like, obviously I, I don't, Sadly, I don't have very much um, ability to just to get amniotic fluid. Right, <laughs> it's a rare opportunity. So, um, so I thought, what's the next best thing? And so I thought, well, what about eggs? You know, eggs have um, they're in a container. Mm -hmm. It's egg whites, kind of like a type of fluid. 
and well let's see what happens so i discovered that egg white has two types of water in it this kind of water that's um gloopy and gelatinous that you know most people associate with egg white but within that egg white if you carefully crack an egg open this thin saliva like part will drip out when you freeze that and anybody can do this when you use really fresh free range hen eggs and you let that thin saliva like part drip into your petri dish and freeze it this isn't about intention or anything this is something everybody sees um, and you freeze it for about eight to ten minutes you see the most extraordinary patterns appear and I've identified six patterns that I've named because so far I believe I might be one of the only people that's ever discovered this um, and so I named them uh, but I want and I've done thousands of these tests and I've seen these patterns and free range duck eggs, chicken eggs, quail eggs and um, geese eggs. So it is for the bird species. Um, but cage 10 eggs can only form the two most rudimentary of the six patterns. And so here's something that was interesting. After seeing the work of Luc Montenegro, who sadly passed recently, and he won the global the the um the no the the Nobel Peace Prize for discovering AIDS, mm. and so he's a very was a very very serious scientist, and he sadly got very criticised for this particular work he started to do, which was in the area of water, and he made this very unusual and interesting observation that makes my work seem really relatively normal. <laughs> he, um, he had two beakers of, of water and one was just pure water and the other one had a sequence of DNA in it. What he did was had them sit, sit side by side and they were exposed to um, radiant light and a low frequency. The next day, he moved aside the one which had the known sequence of DNA in it, and he put a precursor to, to powder to see if there was any DNA present in the test tube, which had just water. And they were able to identify that there were uh, there was DNA present in the precursors of DNA, which was, which was like really bizarre and in the same sequence as the one that was, was sitting next to. So they called it DNA teleportation, which seems like unbelievable. So mm. what does that mean if we're just sitting next to somebody? But apparently, and according to some scientists, this was very serious work and has been repeated by some other people. So, well, what does that mean? I mean, that just takes you on a whole rabbit warren, really. It can just go down. But I was like, well, well, what if I put a free range egg next to a cage 10 egg, what would happen to the structures? So I, I did that. I put one next to the other using the same batch. So I'd already taken, done controls. So I very well knew what their patterns looked like. And when I, the next day, I, I took the crystallography. And what was curious was that the cage 10 egg had taken on patterns of the free range egg and the free range egg had stayed the same. And I'd never seen cage 10 eggs do more than two patterns. And it had done something like four. And I'm like, that's starting to look just like free range egg. How amazing. So I shared it on social media and everybody said, well, lots of people said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what if you surround it by bad eggs? Surely it's going to go bad, which is, of course, the state of the <laughs> people's mindsets these of days. Of course, Yeah. <laughs> And so I did that and I've done repeated that twice and I can show it to you. If you like. Yeah. Yeah. Very, let's take a look. Very, very cool. And very interesting. Now I think that it's in this one. So, so firstly, this is the six patterns of egg albumin that I've named the small star and the pollen are the two most rudimentary. Um, you'll see feathers and it's interesting because they seem very relevant to birds um, and then all the other complex patterns. I'm curious really basically to see whether different species have different patterns that are consistent, which would suggest that the patterns are relative to the form and form of the, um, 
of the species. Um, so we see healing by proximity. So just so we know, this is what a caged hen head egg looks like, and this is a free range egg. Wow. So here's my controls: the free range egg, the caged hen egg. This is what I did. I put the free range egg in the middle, surrounded it by caged hen eggs in this order. So here are the results. The caged hen eggs all improved to begin to look just like free range eggs. This one is particularly beautiful. The ones that were the furthest away had improved, but not as significantly. The free range egg had taken on all the complex patterns you would normally see. So it hadn't got worse. It stayed the same, but the caged hen eggs improved again wow. and control um, here and again the same patterns that I um, put the eggs in and here we have the results and again we see an absolute transference of information from this one to these ones and a, an improvement to some degree in these so when we look at it so I think that nature is looking to improve rather than downgrade particularly in this embryonic stage and if you think about things in nature if they're deformed they don't tend to do well in the natural world so it would make sense that they want to improve rather than degrade that makes sense logically so I also think that information transfer is possible because water is a type of liquid antenna and egg albumin is approximately 80 percent water and given that none of these eggs were fertilized it's fascinating that information was still transferred to the caged eggs, perhaps meaning that potential for life was there from the beginning. That takes into that idea of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Mm. And my personal takeaway from this, given that by molecular count, we're 99% water, is simply if we heal ourselves, we heal others. And so that. I think that that's extremely profound. Um, and so, sorry. No, I, I love that. I think that's, like you said, extremely profound and just a really wonderful message for people to hear. Cause I think that people get so overwhelmed with being in, in a house with negative people or being around other people that are so negative and they are almost just so terrified that if they're around someone negative, it's going to, you know, influence them in that way. And I think, yeah, there's some truth to that if you control what you can, but you can't always, you know, you may have the spouse that complains a bit much or the, you know, so if you work on yourself and that water network in your body, I think that that's a really beautiful, profound statement. I think so. Well, one of the things that is so sad in some human nature situations where you know, if you really start shining your light and you start like really being recreative and doing something really cool in the world, your partner, sometimes that shines a light on them and they feel like they're not doing enough and mm -hmm. they feel like small. And then they try to make you feel worse about yourself mm -hmm. based on the fact that it, actually it's just a thing going on for them and in these moments of understanding that sometimes people do that because they feel like this light shining on them and they feel like maybe they should be doing more with their lives um we're often if, if especially if we're a sensitive person and we like to make people happy and we like peace we can easily start just becoming that person that they that 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 we become because we mm -hmm. we don't we're afraid of confrontation yeah that that's um a very sad thing that I see quite a bit but I think the knowing of that and that that's where communication can really make a difference within relationships where mm -hmm. you can really talk about what's going on not in an aggressive way but in a in a way in which you say you know I really love doing this it makes me really happy um, I really have observed that, you know, there's some part of this that makes you uncomfortable and like, can we please talk about it? Because I don't want to become somebody that like is somebody I don't want to be. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, that's aside from all the water stuff in a way, but I think our natural tendency because I think what is real purpose is to improve things. Mm. And I think that, that, that that's our tendency I mean we might look at the world and go oh that can't be true look at how terrible we've made everything but if you talk if you go to an airport you go to an airport you see so many people 
that haven't seen, especially after the last freaking few years. And you see people meet each other. They haven't seen each other in so long. All you see is love. Yeah. You know, what you see is people hugging each other, loving each other. Most people are kind. They care about their families and their friends. They, 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 they have their own things going on. They have their own, but we all want to be seen, heard, felt, loved, and respected. You know, we have these similarities, mm-hmm. you know, and, and when, when you kind of just see that, you start to say, well, actually, maybe most people are actually really nice. Yeah. And there's just a few people that kind of like <laughs> need more love. And one of the things I do <laughs> think is, if, you know, if you're not feeling loved, then, then one thing, especially for me, I think, well, maybe I need to make myself more lovable. And I, and I kind of think, well, yeah, yeah, what do I want to be and what do I want to feel and how can I take responsibility for that to the best of my ability and how can I change my situation and environment if it is not serving me, um, which can be very hard, um, but also Maybe. perhaps very significant given that we don't know when it's our last time on earth. It's true. It's very true. Mm. So many profound, beautiful, wonderful things in this conversation. I'm, I'm sure people that are listening, their head is kind of like mine. It's just swimming and thinking of all kinds of things. But the, the biggest question is how can people do this, this work? Cause I know that you offer workshops and ways that people can, can experience this. So I'd love to talk about that and I'll link anything that you speak of in the show notes for people but let's talk about that yeah of course um most um, my workshops are booking up uh, pretty booked but I'm going to add some more in soon um so I do small workshops where I work with people online and you do the crystallography and then we look at it and I help you get your freezing setting right and how long you need it and all the details and and they're very helpful um so you can book that on my website which is vadaaustin.com I am you you can also just get the pdf which is an outline of the step-by-step guide and if you don't have any money and you're having a rough time there is a, a code you can put in which is on my website which is which is blessing and you put that in and it's for free you don't have to pay for it um and uh, you can get my list of hydroglyphs, which we didn't have time to really get into, but are wildly significant. So they're on there. Um, and then I have my master classes, which I do three or four a year. And they're a big deal because I I'm I've already started to prepare and it's not until wow. beginning of June. Um, so they they're I share so much in them. And they you the need last to have done one of the smaller oh. workshops to do the master class. Okay. So the master classes are for anybody that loves and is passionate about the depth and breadth of water. Oh. Um, you know, you can easily learn my technique. It's actually very simple, but the master classes are for people that just want to dive deep into the whole arena of water and learn more. And I have speakers from all around the world that speak wow. on them. And I share a lot of my crystallography and my work and my thoughts, but the last one went for 11 and a half hours. And so this time over (laughs) three days Um, and, and people, everyone that comes on gets both my um, step-by-step guide, my list of hydroglyphs um, as well as a recording. And I mean, they're, 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 they're really something. My very last one, which I think I'll have in November, is going to be completely on natural healing and wow. water. So, yeah, um, and Instagram is Veda Austin underscore water. Um, and I post daily on there and I share lots of other people's work. So you can see it. So it's not just me. I can see all the other people that are doing it. I have a private Facebook group specific for people that know my technique and are willing to share their work so there's nearly a thousand people on there now mm-hmm. it's called there's a link in the frequently asked questions in my website but it's called the secret intelligence of water cmp lab which is such a mouthful i don't know what i was thinking when i created it <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um and i'm in the process of writing my book My last book, my publisher went bankrupt and there were only a thousand copies made. And so they've become rare collector's editions. Uh, The new one is going to 
is i mean it's so exciting for me i have so much work and so it's going to cover all the images it's going to cover a lot more topics um and really dive deep and i'm going to have um one chapter dedicated to the quantum physicist i mentioned who's going to share about how he believes this is even working and at the end of it it's going to have my step-by-step -step guide so people can use it as a practical book after looking at all the pictures as well and i don't know whether i'm going to publish through a publisher or self-publish at this point mm -hmm. i'm leaning towards self-publishing so it can actually get out there within the ne in a year's time yeah so there's that fantastic well i'm going to make sure i link all of that in the information section below the podcast or the youtube which hopefully they're watching on youtube so they could see all these amazing beautiful illustrations but this has been absolutely wonderful and i just appreciate you for coming and, and giving so freely of your time today oh it's my pleasure thank you for inviting me it's my yeah. favorite topic <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful.